So let me know when you're ready. Okay, we good? All right, while we do wait for them to get the audio issues there, before Avenatti began representing Stormy Daniels in February of 2018, he was virtually unknown outside of the California legal community. Now let's listen. Nick Hanna, I'm the United States Attorney for the Central District of California here in Los Angeles. With me today is Assistant Special Agent in Charge Mark Pearson from the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigations. Earlier today, Michael Avenatti, a nationally known lawyer, was arrested in New York City on two separate federal cases, one out of this district and one out of New York. Information on the New York case will be provided by the U.S. Attorney in Manhattan. I will discuss the California case now. The case was filed in Santa Ana on Friday and was unsealed today. The case is the result of two years of tax collection and investigative efforts by the IRS. The federal criminal complaint charges Mr. Avenatti with wire fraud and bank fraud and contains a series of allegations that paint an ugly picture of lawless conduct and greed. On his Twitter account, Mr. Avenatti describes himself as, quote, attorney, advocate, fighter for good, unquote. But the allegations in this case describe something different, a corrupt lawyer who instead fights for his own selfish interests by misappropriating close to a million dollars that rightfully belonged to one of his clients. The complaint also alleges that Mr. Avenatti obtained bank loans worth millions of dollars through fraud by submitting phony personal income tax returns and other false information to the lending bank. According to the complaint, the tax returns were clearly false because Mr. Avenatti never filed federal income tax returns for the years, years in question and never paid the federal income tax as reflected on those false returns. I'm going to give you an overview of what the two-count criminal complaint filed in our district alleges. I do want to remind everyone that Mr. Avenatti is presumed innocent unless and until these allegations are proven beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. In December 2017, Mr. Avenatti negotiated a settlement for a client that involved, involved in an intellectual property dispute. Under the settlement, $1.6 million was due to be paid by January 10, 2018. At a meeting in his law office in Newport Beach, Mr. Avenatti gave the client a bogus settlement agreement that instead listed a later date, March 10, 2018, as the date by which the payment was due. The $1.6 million was wired on January 5th to an account controlled by Mr. Avenatti. Mr. Avenatti then used his client's money to pay expenses for his own coffee business, Global Baristas LLC, which did business as Tully's Coffee, as well as to pay his own personal expenses. When the fake March 10 deadline came and went, the client asked Mr. Avenatti where his settlement money was. Mr. Avenatti never told him the money had arrived, and to add insult to injury, between April and November of 2018, Mr. Avenatti, quote-unquote, advanced $130,000 to his client so the client could meet his own financial obligations while he waited for the supposedly late settlement money to arrive. In essence, it appears Mr. Avenatti loaned the client's own money to the client money that Mr. Avenatti had already secretly collected. To, to this day, nearly 15 months later, 
Mr. Avenatti's client is still waiting for the bulk of his settlement, even after he hired another attorney who discovered that Mr. Avenatti had the funds all along. The facts alleged in the bank fraud charge are as follows. Beginning in 2014, Mr. Avenatti defrauded the People's Bank, a federally insured institution in Mississippi, by falsely representing his and his business's income. Mr. Avenatti did so by submitting fictitious personal income tax returns and a fraudulent law firm partnership tax return to support his application for three applications for three separate loans totaling $4.1 million. To obtain these loans, Mr. Avenatti submitted phony personal income tax returns claiming to have earned a total of $14.1 million in adjusted gross income for 2011, 2012, and 2013. He claimed to have paid a total of $2.85 million in estimated tax payments to the IRS in 2012 and 2013. In truth and in fact, Mr. Avenatti never, paid, never filed personal income tax returns for 2011, 2012, or 2013, and he never paid federal income tax during those years. Moreover, Mr. Avenatti still owed the IRS more than $850,000 in unpaid taxes, interest, and penalties for the years 2009 and 2010. People's Bank was ultimately repaid, but only after significant efforts and threats to refer one loan to collections. Lawyers have a sworn duty to obey the law and to protect their clients. Our system of justice depends on it. Mr. Avenatti has breached that duty and violated the principles of honesty and fairness that he claims to uphold. If convicted of these crimes, Mr. Avenatti faces a statutory maximum of 50 years in federal prison. I want to thank IRS Criminal Investigations for their diligent work on this case, work that began after an IRS revenue officer made a criminal referral over a year ago. I will also note that the investigation is continuing, and IRS agents are executing search warrants as we speak. I also want to thank our prosecutors on this case, Assistant U.S. Attorneys Julian Andre and Brett Sagel, for the many long hours they have spent on this investigation. We expect Mr. Avenatti will make his initial appearance before a court in New York later today on both cases. We further expect he will be ordered to appear before a federal judge in Santa Ana at a future date. At this time, I would like to introduce IRS Assistant Special Agent in Charge Mark Pearson, after which we'll take some questions. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Pearson, and I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the Los Angeles Field Office IRS Criminal Investigations. I'm here with U.S. Attorney Nick Hanna to announce the filing of a criminal complaint and arrest of Michael Evanetti on charges of wire fraud and bank fraud. I wanted to start off by stating that the current criminal investigation involving Mr. Evanetti began and continues to be an IRS tax investigation. The case was originally referred, referred by our collection division based on irregularities they were encountering in their attempts to collect payroll taxes from Mr. Avenetti's businesses. Since the original referral, IRS Criminal Investigation Division, in partnership with the Los Angeles United States Attorney's Office, has been conducting an extensive financial investigation into these business entities, as well as Mr. Avenetti's personal financial transactions. Based on the evidence uncovered by the tax investigation, IRS special agents expanded the original payroll tax allegations to encompass additional financial frauds, which we believe have been used to fuel an unrestrained and lavish lifestyle by Mr. Avenetti. 
I wish to emphasize this case originated from our civil division, pursuing the resolution and collection of an outstanding payroll tax debt as far back as 2016. Based on the anomalies found in our collection officer, by our collection officers, the matter was referred to the Criminal Investigation Division around September of 2017. By way of background, I'd like to paint you a picture. Michael Evanetti practiced law through Evanetti & Associates and Egan Evanetti LLP in Newport Beach, California. Mr. Avenetti was the principal owner and chief executive officer of Global Baristas U.S. LLC, which operated Tully's Coffee Shops in Washington State as well as California. It is alleged that between 2015 and 2017, Tully's parent company failed to file employment taxes, tax returns, and pay approximately $3.2 million in federal payroll taxes. Similarly, it's also alleged that e Egan Evanetti LLP failed to file payroll tax returns and failed to file and failed to pay, I'm sorry, approximately $2.4 million in payroll taxes. This despite Mr. Evanetti's personal website claiming that he has recovered over $1 billion in verdicts and settlements. With regard to the criminal referral of the employment tax case, Mr. Evanetti is purported to have lied to an IRS revenue officer and also changed bank account information as well as instructed others to conceal and relocate funds in effort to avoid and defeat IRS tax liens and tax levies. Constrained by these and other suspected steps taken by Evanetti to obstruct the IRS collection action, the revenue officer initiated the fraud referral to our division in September of 2017. As this criminal case unfolded over the course of the past 12 months, IRS special agents found evidence of financial fraud going well beyond the original employment tax allegations. With respect to the wire fraud count, from about December of 2017 to the present, Mr. Evanetti allegedly defrauded one of the law firm's clients out of approximately $1.6 million, which was a settlement payment. Rather than transfer his client's portion of the settlement proceeds to his client, Mr. Evanetti chose to use the entire $1.6 million for his own purposes. It's difficult to imagine a greater betrayal of trust than that between a fiduciary and his client. In regard to the bank fraud count in 2014, Michael Evanetti's law practice and coffee company obtained three separate loans totaling over $4 million. Mr. Evanetti allegedly provided the bank with false federal tax returns. In these tax returns, Mr. Evanetti submitted he reported approximately four to $5 million in income for each year and claimed to have paid the IRS $2.8 million in federal taxes. In reality, Mr. Avenetti never filed personal income tax returns for those years and has never made any tax payments with relation to those years. Today's announcement is about an attorney who has failed to file personal income tax returns, charged with embezzling clients' money, and defrauding a bank. All of these acts were taken to support his lavish lifestyle, which included a venture into a car racing company, a lifestyle which is estimated to exceed over $200,000 a month, the rental of a Newport Beach home at $100,000 per month, and the ownership of a $5 million Laguna Beach home. IRS criminal investigation is a major contributor in the effort to combat financial institution fraud, and the United States Attorney's Office recognizes CI's investigative expertise in this complex area. Finally, in parting, I'd like to say to the professionals out there, including attorneys, who create elaborate schemes that have no other purpose than to mislead others, defraud the IRS, their clients, and financial institutions, they run the very high risk of prosecution. These individuals may face severe consequences, including imprisonment and substantial fines. Thank you. New York, uh, Southern District is going to come down with their indictments.
today? And I mean, were you in coordination? These were two separate investigations, but we coordinated the arrests so that there's one one arrest on the two warrants. And you would have moved without them. Uh, we have a totally separate case, uh, separate investigation. Why you did it today, just for the convenience of having him arrested in New York, or what? We coordinated the arrest for operational reasons, but we obtained our arrest on Friday, uh, and we've been building to that for quite some time. It was a lengthy investigation out here. Uh, we developed our case separately, uh, and our case is completely separate. has nothing to do with the New York case. We just executed the search warrant simultaneously in New York uh, w when we had him. Um, I'm not be uh, uh, in the case other than what's already in the uh, in the affidavit. Uh, in the lengthy affidavit, there is some reference to the bankruptcy proceeding, so I would just refer you to that. How yes. How unusual is it to have someone who is not just a member of the bar, but a pretty uh, well-known member of the bar, flat out just not file taxes? I mean, the average American knows if you don't file taxes for three years. Probably going to get noticed by the IRS. How unusual is it for somebody of this stature to just flat out not file taxes? You know, I, I'm not going to speculate on 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 that. Other than uh, I haven't seen a similar case. Uh, yes. Totally, totally unrelated. The 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 tax. Uh, the tax efforts actually go back, the collection efforts actually go back to 2015 with respect to the Egan and Avenatti law firm. Taxes that were not paid. Two separate cases. Our case is completely separate than uh, what's happening in New York. Oh, uh, as, as I think was mentioned, um, we initiated a financial investigation with respect to Mr. Avenatti to look at various financial dealings. As you can see from the affidavit, a number of uh, activities were engaged in, including uh, the wire fraud with respect to the client's money and including the bank fraud. Um, there are other allegations contained in the affidavit, but right now the only charges are the wire fraud and the bank fraud, but it was a comprehensive look. Last All right there. So we were catching the tail end there of that Los Angeles news conference there for Michael Avenetti, who was arrested earlier this morning. He was charged in two states in two separate cases. Not a good day there for the ex-lawyer of uh, porn star Stormy Daniels. We are awaiting the New York news conference. That is going to allege that he uh, tried to extort Nike for anywhere from 20 to 25 million dollars that's coming up in just a little bit let's listen into a little bit more of this while the signal is good uh, the, the facts in this case speak for themselves okay thank you very much ladies and gentlemen so like what we'll do a couple more All right there. So not the best connection there, but you get the point there in that Los Angeles uh, for prosecutors there. Here is what we are waiting for in New York City now where uh, he was arrested there earlier this morning. We are going to learn new details from prosecutors in New York there on the alleged extortion scheme timeline and more from Nike and that is coming up in just a little bit everybody we'll keep an eye on this shot here for you as soon as prosecutors come to the podium there we'll bring it to you right here on news now in the meantime I'm going to take you back out to Philadelphia where uh, a major Medicaid fraud